One more time before we get started. Okay. Yeah, everybody's good today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Very good. Very good. Very good. A few more minutes and we'll be ready to rock and roll. Okay, um, everybody's had a, um, a told me old week. Not just a regular week. Did everybody have a, a told me old week? I know there's a lot that's going on um, in the world today. We just want to make sure everybody's doing good. So, how was everybody's week? It was good, busy. Okay. But good. All right, hallelujah. 
Well, uh, the Gregorian day, or the Gregorian week is done for some of us. And we're going to get ready for the rest of the pagan week, Saturday and Sunday. So pray for you, those of us that are uh, not working, we'll be able to take some time and enjoy ourselves. As we fast approach Yom Kippur, hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay, so Mr. McCall, we're going to go ahead and get um, tonight's service started. All right, this is going to be entitled The Final Days of Judgment, Part 3. And um, I'm going to try to get blowing um, our executive Moray Moray on the Yahoo's um, so far. And let's see what kind of good sounds we can get out of this tonight. And then after that, we'll have um, Brother Yaakov to bring us in with prayer, and we'll get the lesson started for tonight. Sacrifice for the nation of Yashra all. Can I get a hallelujah? hallelujah? Hallelujah. All right. All right. That's how they do it in church. Can I get an amen? So can we get a hallelujah? All right. So we got a hallelujah. Um, again, Mr. McCobb, the title of today's class is called The Final Days of Judgment. Um, part three. We're living in some real serious times here. And we just want to make sure that everybody is kept abreast of what's going on today. Everybody make sure that they understand the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, making sure that we have on the full armor. The full armor is going to be very important. So what's been going on with my week? Um, I had a very inter interesting week. I uh, spoke with my good brother, um, Samak, been going over a couple of things and um, it is like almost like the saga continues. I mean, there's still a whole lot that's going on in Israel, and we still have um, a lot to do, but we don't have a whole lot of time. So I pray that um, everybody's able to get their acts together because we are definitely living in some real serious times here. Um, one of the things that Moray and I had talked about is um, I did a lesson on this for, for the longest. Um, I can't see um, for the life of me why it's kind of hard for people to see that from Genesis to Revelation, again, the father's trying to have a relationship with his bride, and that bride is the nation of Israel. And again, how we conduct ourselves um, 
with one another is going to be a reflection how we're supposed to be treating um, the Father. I mean, those are the first principles. So the how we act again towards the Father is supposed to be the same way that we're supposed to interact with one another. The way that we interact with one another is supposed to be the same way that we interact with the Father. Everything has to be done in, um, in one accord. Um, a lot, what we've been finding out um, that's been going on a lot is that um, people are not living by um, their word. Your word is supposed to be your bond. All right? Um, there's been, there's a lot that's going on where um, they're um, married couples um, that have ketubas and are not honoring their ketubas. We have some that don't have ketubas and they've been married through the um, judicial system or the laws of the land and um, they're not observing uh, those laws either as pertaining to marriage. Mm -hmm. So um, there's too many um, situations where two people have been married in the system and uh, they say, well, being that we don't have a ketubah, we're not married. Mm -hmm. But you look at the situation, these are people that have been together for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. Mm -hmm. These are people that have property together, children together, and um, they say, well, because we don't have a ketubah, it's not a binding marriage. And I don't know what in the world uh, <laughs> some of you Israelites, um, who you're listening to, because that is not constitutional according to Torah sound. Before anything, before anything can be put down on paper, words, dialogue has to be exchanged. And so what you say has to be written. So first and foremost, your word, again, is supposed to be your bond. Mm -hmm. And I just really pray that everybody gets a better understanding of Scripture. Understanding um, is that that man is not supposed to disrespect that woman. That woman is not supposed to disrespect that man. Everything is supposed to be done in shalom and in peace, and in harmony, and, and, and in love, Ahava, mm -hmm. all right? So Ahava is going to be very important. The word Ahava is actually uh, love, Akkad is one. So there must be that unison in order for the body to function. Without that, or without that, there can be no, um, no unity, and there can be no Shalom. One of the words I want to talk about today, Mishmaka, um, again, the Final Days of Judgment is the title of today's class, but I just want to touch on something, again, pertaining to marriage. We're talking about the word fornication. Fornication. Is that right? Fornication. The Hebrew word for fornication is zanah. All right? Zanah. And what's happening now is that, coming to find out, when we look at true biblical uh, definitions because we're talking about returning to our culture, all right, our land, and we want to be the people of the book. We want to be like the Abraham, the Isaacs, and the Jacobs. These are these are our forefathers. Fornication is illicit sex uh, and a whole lot of other stuff that comes along with it. But the definition that we're going to be sticking uh, with today. The word fornication, the Hebrew word is zanah, and the word in its proper context, according to a relationship, any disobedience to the Father, not following Torah, okay, makes you zanah. All right, so this is how strict this relationship is. If you're not following all of Torah, when I say all of Torah, we're talking about the book of Exodus, the 20th chapter, that covenant that was made at Mount Sinai. So again, Zanah, fornication, the definition that we get according to Hebrew culture is disobedience to the Father. And the way that you do disobedient to the Father is that we are not following Torah. So let's get some examples of this and we can show in scripture exactly what's going on and prayfully Israel can correct the problem mm -hmm. all right we're going to go to the book of um the wisdom of Solomon and the apocrypha and I'm going to start with verse 12 14 and 12 the wisdom of Solomon and the apocrypha 
Wisdom of Solomon, Shalomo, Prokofer 12, 14 to 12. Watch this now. Because fornication is also idol worshiping. Uh, what do we have now? Um, for the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. That's going to be key. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon, the 14th chapter, verse 12. Because there's physical fornication and there's spiritual fornication. So if you to tell a person, listen, you know what? You're a Zana. Mm -hmm. All right? And so oftentimes a person would say, listen, you know what? I haven't committed adultery. I have not committed any sexual um, immoral acts. But this thing's a lot further or more deeper than um, what they call the Peshat level. What we want to do now is look at the full definition of what is now um, fornication because what's inside of a person is going to reflect on the, um, what the person does on the outside. And so who you are on the inside is going to reflect who you are on the outside. So we're looking for the whole body to be clean. So the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. So now we go to the book of Genesis, all right? And we see what happened between Adam and his Isha. Again, the beginning, okay, of fornication now, it was spiritual fornication where you're no longer following Torah. Mm -hmm. we, we see what's going on here now? So I'm not saying that there was physical intercourse that Eve had with, this, uh, with the adversary, mm -hmm. but there was spiritual fornication because she did not follow Torah and this happened in the very beginning. And the invention of them, the corruption of life. For neither were they from the beginning, okay, which is fornication. For neither were they from the beginning, neither shall they be forever. For by the vain glory of men, they were entered into the world. When men wanted to now lean upon their own understanding other than following Torah. Again, the only way that we can be in one accord in Shalom is that we have to follow the rules and regulations that was outlined to us in the book of Exodus, the 20th chapter. For neither were they from the beginning, neither shall they be forever. For by the vain glory of men they entered into the world, and therefore shall they come shortly to an end. We're talking about physical uh, fornication and spiritual fornication. For a father afflicted with an untimely mourning, when he had made an image of his child, soon taken away, now honoreth him as an Elohim, or as it has as a God, which was then a dead man, delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. Verse 16. Thus in process of time, this is not these items start now. Thus in process of time, an unrighteous custom grown strong was kept as a law and graven images were worshipped by the commandments of tyrants or kings whom men could not honor in presence because they were because they dwelt far off they took the counterfeit of his vis visage from far and made an express image of a king whom they honored, to the end that they, by this, um, their foreignness, they might flatter him um, that was absent as if he was present. Also, the singular diligence of the artificer did help to set forward the ignorance to more um, superstition. For he preventured willing to please one in authority, forced all skill to make the resemblance of the best fashion. And so the multitude, allured by the grace of the work, took him now for an Elohim, or a God, with a little before was but honored as a man. And this was an occasion to deceive the world, to deceive the world, for men serving either calamity or tyranny did ascribe unto stones and stocks the incommunicable name of Elohim. Moreover, 
this was not enough for them that they erred in the knowledge of Elohim, but whereas they lived in the great war of ignorance, those so, those so great plagues um, called they peace. For while as they slew their children and sacrifices now to these idols, all right, or used secret ceremonies or made revelings of strange rites, they kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. So this spiritual fornication now is very important because what happened now was that they began to make idols of kings, men, and animals. And they began to worship, okay, these uh, images of stone and wood, and they had strange rites and rituals associated now with these, uh, with this idol worshiping, where they killed their children and they traded their wives in front of these idols and performed all type of grotesque, all right, all type of grotesque um, rites in front of these idols, disclaiming um, the father of Yahuwah as the one that brought them up out of Egypt. Mm. Wow. They kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled, but uh, either one slew another treacherously or grieved him by adultery, so that there reigned in all men, without exception, blood, manslaughter, theft, dissimul dissimulation, corruption, unfaithful uh, unfaithfulness, torments, and perjury disquieting of good men, forgetfulness of good terms, defiling of souls, changing of kind. Changing of kind. Men to women. Women to men. It's the same thing that's going on today, but it is now escalating. We are now living in Sodom and Gomorrah all over again. Is all the worshiping of idols. So again, there's a physical worship of, of an idol, but it's also associated now with disobedience. Anytime you're disobedient to the Father, you are zana. All right? You're zana. That's fornication. Um, verse 27. For the worshiping of idols, not to be named, is the beginning of the cause and the end of all evil. Verse 27 again now, for the worshiping of idols, not to be named, is the beginning, the cause and the end of all evil. For either they are mad when they be merry, or prophesy lies, or live unjustly, or else lightly forswear themselves. For insomuch as their trust is in idols which have no life. Though they swear falsely, yet they look not to be heard. However, for both causes shall they be justly punished now, justly punished, both because they thought not well of um, Yehoah, giving heed unto idols, and also unjustly swore in deceit, despising um, the set of partners. For it is not the power of them by whom they swear, but it is the just vengeance of sinners that punishes always the offense of the unrighteous. So, long story short, all right, again, that word fornication, zana, disobedience of the Father, and we have to understand now why we are actually now in the final days of judgment. Why are we, uh, why are we there? And we're going to see why we are there. Before we get into the main lesson, we have one more thing we have to talk, uh, talk about also. This is going to be the last one. Uh, before we get started, let's talk about um, a very controversial scripture. We're going to go to the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, the 45th chapter, and we're going to start at the 5th uh, the verse, and we're going to have... Uh, we're gonna have, if we can have Zabuz, 
If you can do 45, 5 and 6, the book of Isaiah, Yeshayahu. We want to look at verses 5 and 6. Chapter? Yeah, 45. Oh, 45, 5. Isaiah, Isaiah, the 45th chapter. Okay, five and six. Verses 5 and 6. Okay, Isaiah, because there's yeah, because there's a lot. Forty six or forty five. Forty five. Forty five. Forty five verses five and six. Five. Isaiah forty five five and six. And the reason why we're going to bring out this um, particular scripture here is because um, there's a lot of folks that don't believe in the Mashiach. They believe that they can go directly to the Father. They have this um, misconception that the Mashiach can't be proven. In the uh, what we call it the Old Testament is almost as if uh, people that think like that don't understand prophecy, and prophecies are always reoccurring. All right, they are our examples. But let's see if we can make heads or tails out of this uh, situation in um, the book of Isaiah 45, 5 and 6. So, my brother Zabu, you're on. Okay, uh, Isaiah 45, 5. I am Yahuwah, and there is none else. There is no Elohim beside me. I girded thee through, I mean, though thou hast not known me, that they may not, may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am Yahuwah, and there is none else. Is there anyone else outside of Yahuwah? No. 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 Okay, so we have the Yohe Huhe. I am Yahuwah, and there is none else. There is no Elohim beside me. Is there another Elohim beside Yahuwah, the no. Father? No. No. So how do we then explain the Mashiach? The Son of the Father. Hmm? The Son of the Father. The son of the father? Wouldn't he also be an Elohim? Right, because this is where it's going to get interesting at, is that when you look at this in Hebrew, all right, we have this in Hebrew, we have um, we have Ani, Yahuwah, we have the um, the U, and we have the Aleph, the Yod, the Nun, Sophit, we have Wain, we have Od, Zu. Late Ain Elohim A Zakar Wa Lo Yada Tani. And when you look at this now in the original writing, one of the things that you do find is that the word the is not there. All right? The word the is not there. Whenever you see the word the, it almost gives you the impression it's like it's, it's the definite article. So you have the Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. um, I want everybody to understand is that uh, when, when, when we begin to look at the language, there's a lot of us that's studying the Hebrew language. But I also want everybody to understand is that Moses, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did not speak modern day Aramaic. They just didn't. When you begin to see the Nikuls and um, all of the, um, the vowel points, and how um, vowel points change the pronunciation of, uh, of letters. I want everybody to understand is that there were no digeshes, there were no, no coups, there were, none of that was there. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes what we see is that people that are studying um, Aramaic, they then go to the Biblical Hebrew, because there's a difference between Biblical Hebrew and Aramaic. They try now to uh, push Aramaic into okay biblical Hebrew now biblical Hebrew now there has to be um verbs and, and prepositional phrases because they did have a language but um, we just have to be real careful because I see that a lot of people are gung-ho gung-ho on trying to make or to read biblical Hebrew using Ar Aramaic um, principles so you don't have the word the there and I want us to see now where it says, uh, and I am Yahuwah. Morning. What, what do you mean by Aramaic principles? Um, well, we have, um, it's, it's the way that they um, do Hebrew. Okay. 
because there's there's a modern Hebrew and then there's a biblical Hebrew. So if you used to go to um, to any university or you get up like any um, Hebrew primer, that's they're going to teach you Aramaic mm -hmm. Hebrew. They're not going to teach you um, biblical Hebrew. When I went over there to the land of Israel and you begin to look at like the paleo, mm -hmm. um, they're not accustomed to seeing those uh, Hebrew um, alphabet characters. Mm -hmm. They're used to now seeing, uh, for example, the, the point system. Yeah. Another about points. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's what everybody is bent on now. And they want to use those rules, okay, to actually now look at biblical Hebrew, where before there was an the Aramaic, now we had um, the Aleph. Those are the 22 letters in the, uh, this is biblical, biblical ancient Hebrew. This now would be the Aramaic, where we have now the Aleph, we would have the Bet, we have the, um, the Gimel, we would have the Dalit, we would have the Hay, we would have the, um, the Hu, and we would have the, um, and, you know, from there on, you know, those, those would be the letters there. But this is now, this is Aramaic. Then this is um, the, the ancient, and then before this, now we have the pictograph. Mm -hmm. And again, my argument now is that a, a lot of times when reading the language, we're using these principles, okay, to try to fit in the way that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob um, read. All right, and again, there were no um, vowel points and all this other stuff with what they're teaching now. And, the, um, the Aramaic. I don't have a problem with the Aramaic. It's just that I just want to make sure that everybody understands that there is a difference. So I, Yahuwah, and there is none else. There is no Elohim beside me. So a lot of um, people who don't believe in the Mashiach, they're using this to say, listen, you know what? There is nobody else except for the Father. Mm -hmm. Just the Father. And so the way that man is able to communicate with the father now is directly to the father. But then you have this problem going on is that you now have it's all throughout scripture you have the word Lord of host. And the word for host is sabbath. Then you have the word Yahuwah. The word host means army. So, does Yahuwah have a host and he's the host of the army? Or is Yahuwah alone? And there's no other way that the Father is communicating with man, or there's no other way that man can communicate with the Father but just going directly to him. And so the Lord or the Yahuwah of hosts now has an army. And we know that there's uh, this, this army now is working under this supreme one. The supreme one. And the army now would just be his Elohim. And this is now just the messengers. The Mashiach was the ultimate messenger. And we're going to show some more of this when we begin to look at the scripture here. The word Elohim, okay, the word God, is a strong number 430. Again, the word Elohim, it means rulers, judges, divine ones, angels, gods. It's plural, intensive, and single, with a singular meaning. God, goddesses, God-like one, works of special possession or God or the true God or Elohim. That's the Browns Drivers Briggs definition. And then we have the Strong's definition, plural of Strong's number 433, where we have um, Elohims in the ordinary sense, but specifically used in the uh, plural thus, spe uh, especially with the article of the Supreme One, 
um, occasionally applied by the way of difference of magistrates and sometimes as a superlative angel. So they're just trying to show that the word is plural. So the way that we will read this now, I am Yahuwah Elohim, and there is no other um, ruler, judge, magistrate um, um, outside of me. Everything is coming from one source, the Father. Nobody is ever denying the Father. Every single class that I do, I always say all the steam to the Father with the understanding that the Father has um, messengers. He's the host of the army. Now let's go to the word besides. All right, the word beside in um, 45 and 5. The word besides is the strongest number 2108. 2108. It means, in the Hebrew word, is Zula. A removal, this is the Brown's Driver's Briggs definition, a removal, a putting away, it's um, a noun in its feminine state. It also means except, besides, with the exception of, with removal of, and then it has preposition. Except that conjunction, and then you have the Strong's definition, which is Strong's number 2107, where it's coming from now, Properly scattering, that is removal, used adverbally, except, besides, but, only, and save. Now, when you go to verse 46, what do you notice um, between verses 45 and 46 with the words beside? I want to... Verse 46 and 45? Um, verse 5 and verse 6. Isaiah 45, 5 through 6 is what we read. What do you notice now with the two words beside um, what we have in verses 5 and 6? I don't see any difference. It's a different strong number, right? Oh, we oh, have, oh, we yeah, have yeah. okay, we have um, 2108, but verse uh, six reads that they may know from the rising of the sun from the west and there is none beside me. So verse um, six is actually reiterating verse five. But watch how this thing um, works here. There is none beside me. I am Yahuwah and there is none else. When you go to 1107, um, it means apart from, except, without, or besides. Um, constructive plural from the, um, 1077 and it also from 5703 is it is a constructive plural form not till that is a prepositional adverb except without besides besides not say without so what this is saying is simply this there is no Elohim without the father there is no judge there is no magistrate nobody can operate outside or without the Father. That's what that means. Not meaning that you cannot operate or go directly, you can go directly to the Father. Anything that is operating in the Father's name okay, is coming outside of Him and you can't, op you can't operate outside of Him. It would have to come from Him. So again, um, apart from, you cannot <laughs> Be a messenger apart from Yahuwah, without Yahuwah, not in Yahuwah. Proof is Isaiah 26, 13. Isaiah 26, 13. Yep, the book of Isaiah. 26, 13. Can you read more? Uh, let me just get it to Isaiah 26, 13. Yes, please. O Yahuwah, our Elohim, other lords besides... Other lords or other mighty ones beside thee, okay. Have had dominion over us, but by these only will we make mention of thy name. Okay. Like he only, we will make mention of that name. Exactly. So there are other Elohims. 
mighty ones. But these now are not operating inside of the Father. Mm -hmm. Israel's responsibility now was to operate inside of the messengers, all right, that is coming from the Father. This is the reason why we have brought out earlier about idols. You can't channel in to the Father through idols. It's always through his messengers, his prophets that he's been sending as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. Let's get some more proof. Um, we can go to the book of Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64, and I'm going to read verse 4. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither have the eye seen, O Elohim, beside thee, which he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. See? For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by ear, neither have the eye seen, O Father, beside thee, or beside you, which he hath prepared for him that wait, that wait for him. Isaiah 45, 21. All this is talking about beside him. 45, 21. I'm going to read, be reading from the CSB, and then I'm going to switch back to the KJV to make sure that everybody understands what's going on here. 4521, KJV. Tell you and bring them near. Yes, let them take counsel together. Who, which is a question, who have declared this from ancient time? Who have told it from that time? Have not I, Yahuwah? And there is no Elohim else beside me. Now watch, now watch the characteristics now. I am a just Elohim and a Savior. There is none beside me. The Saviors, okay, the anointed ones are all coming from a source, the Father. They can't operate, but he says, beside him without him. That's all it means. Easy. Um, Genesis 41-44. You know, Maureen, you need to do that uh, 45, too. God, man, you can go all the way down with 50 people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm trying to get to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, 41-44. Um, um, Genesis 41 And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain upon his neck. Uh, this is the book of uh, Genesis, the 41st chapter. Uh, 41. Um, I'm going to start at 41, excuse me. 41, 41. I'm going to read down to... Um, 44, excuse me. Who is in charge here? Is it Pharaoh? Who's the main one in charge here? Is it uh, Pharaoh or Joseph? Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. So now, and Pharaoh said it to Joseph, See, I have sent thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off this ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he made. And they cried before him, which is Joseph, bowed the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Who is acting as um, a messenger of Pharaoh? Joseph. Joseph, all right? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without you, shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land of Egypt. So, we have Pharaoh. Pharaoh um, anoints Joseph. Joseph now is in command, acting on behalf of Pharaoh. So he's working in um, 
compound or within the confines now of Pharaoh. This is what Joseph is doing. And it's the same thing with the Mashiach. Joseph was anointed. The Mashiach was anointed. Real easy. All right. I'll dab into that a little bit more a little bit later on. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel, the 38th chapter. Because there's going to be severe consequences for disobedience. There has to be loyalty inside the house. It just simply has to be. If there's no loyalty, there's going to be major problems, and we don't want no problems. <laughs> Especially um, in these days here. Because there's a lot that's going on, and we see at, at some point we're going to have to let go of this Babylonian system. At some point, we see what happened with um, Breonna Taylor, where the police officers, they, they went off free, all right? And we have now, they, she was awarded, I think, like $12 million. Mm -hmm. But even the women are under attack. Mm -hmm. The Israelite man's life is of no concern to Amalek, the Karzars, the Edomites, whatever you want to call them. This Babylonian system has no use for the Israelites. Hmm. But the man was charged, okay, with endangerment now because the bullet went through the wall and it almost hit a white woman, okay? <laughs> and so now he's been held accountable for endangerment of life, but not for the death of Brianna Taylor. Mm -hmm. That speaks volumes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaks volumes. You're going to be held accountable for endangering a white woman's life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I, I, I really don't get it. Really don't get it. I can't understand for the life of me while, why people aren't understanding the importance of commitment, vows, marriage, kettle sheens, the, uh, the Nestling. They have it's like no idea. But when you look at the festivals, the festivals now are all about marriages. I mean, a marriage. The groom reconciling with the bride. This is what all the festivals are about. They're, they're about, but at some point, uh, praying that everybody would get the, um, the, the understanding of it. But um, we, we'll just see. That's all I can say is that um, we'll see. Let's go to the book of uh, Ezekiel. Yekezekiel, the 38th. Um, the 38th chapter. Verse 1. 38 and verse 1. Let me read from the CSB, jumping back and forth to the KJV. This is important. And the word of Yahuwah came to me, which is Ezekiel, son of man, um, set thy face against God. Anybody remember? From the last lesson that we did, Gog came from what group of people? Oh, David. David? No, Jacob. Jacob. Hallelujah. Good job. Hallelujah. Son of man, set thy face against Japheth, or Gog, the land of Magog, of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tobal. This is all talking about um, Japheth. And it says now to prophesy against him and say, Behold, or oh, this is what Yahuwah says, Behold, I am against you, God, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws, and bring out with all your army, including horses and riders who are all splendidly dressed, or clothed with all sorts of armor, a huge assembly, armed with large and small shields, all of them brandishing swords. Persia. All right? Geography is going to be very important. When we talk about um, Persia, we talk about from the west. Kush, which are uh, Libya, which are the Ethiopians here. Excuse me, Ethiopians now, we're talking about um, from the south. Libya is talking about from the east. 
So we have the Persians, Ethiopia, and Libya is also now with Gog, all of them with shield and helmet and helmets. Gomer with all of his troops and Beth Togomar from the remotest part of the north, along with his troops, many people are with him. Now, looking at America, when we look at the um, the furthest or the remotest part of the north, that will put us where? I'm sorry, say that again. The furthest um, that you can go north from America will put you where? No, no, no. You can go up to Iceland and all that, right? You can get up to Russia. Russia, Russia, right. Russia. Okay. This is going to be real important that we understand these prophecies in the last days now. Be prepared. Be prepared and get yourselves ready, you and your whole assembly that has been mobilized around you, and you will be their guard. King James Version, be thou prepared and prepare thyself, you and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. Anybody know who this um, company is that's becoming with uh, Russia? China? I'm not, you know, I, I'm just trying to make sure everybody, I, I don't want to bore anybody with the lows. I'm just, the it's the Persia, and Ethiopia, and Libya. Oh. It's going to be Persia. Yeah, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya. Right. Yeah, we just read it in verse 5. I thought China was going to be coming in, coming with, uh, with no, China's going to fight. Yeah, okay. I, I thought China and, and Russia was going to team up at some point in time and fight the uh, Israelites. Um, they're coming with the Confederacy. Okay. And the main one that is talked about here in the book of Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, is talking about Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya is coming along with them. Right. And it says now, and after many days, y'all should be visited. In the <laughs> last year, that's going to be very important, or in the latter days, thou shalt come into a land that has been restored or brought back from the sword. We need to understand who that is now. A people that has been regathered from many people to the mountains of Israel, which had long been a ruin. They were brought out from the people and all of them now live securely. Now, there still remaineth a rest for Israel. Israel now has been regathered. We're now back in the land, but things are still not over. Gomer, coming along, he's going to be coming with the Persians, Libya, and he's coming now uh, with Ethiopia, and they're coming against Israel. This is going to be a long, long battle, a long battle, all right? It's still not done yet. Now, I found it real interesting, and after a long time, you will be summoned. In the last years... You will enter into a land that has been restored from war and be gathered from many peoples to the mountains of Israel, which had long been a ruin. They were brought from the people and all now are living securely. You, of all your troops and many peoples with you, will advance coming against Israel now like a thunderstorm. Mm -hmm. All thy bands and many people... And many people with you will advance coming like a thunderstorm and you will be a cloud covering the land. Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, it shall come to pass that at that same time shall things come into your mind and thou shalt think an evil thing. These nations now, when we're dwelling safely in the land, they're going to say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. Now that, can you just imagine the sight now, okay? Israel has been redeemed. Mm -hmm. We're living in the land. Mm -hmm. And our esteem is coming from the Father. This is going to be our protection. We're going to be living in a, uh, in a city where there are no walls, no gates. So at this point now, the mighty one of Israel mm -hmm. is going to stand up and fight for the nation of Israel. Oh, when I was reading this, I'm like, wow. 
this is going to be a great day. Now, this is their intentions now, to take a spoil and to take a prey, to turn your hand against ruins now inhabited it and against a people gathered from the nations. We, at this time now, we would have gathered cattle, all yeah. type of possessions who live in the center of the world. And the center of the world is Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So at this time, we're going to be filthy, rich, mm -hmm. living in the land. Mm -hmm. The land is going to be um, yielding her increase because we see now that the people in Israel can't be the people. Right. They can't be because if they were, the land would be in its abundance. Mm -hmm. When I went to Israel, it's basically like a desert. Yeah. Yeah. There's not too much that's going on over there now. And we know that they're not the people because there's no reunification. Mm -hmm. They only talk about, quote unquote, Jews. Jews. The Jews right. are there. But what about Benjamin, Levi, mm -hmm. Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Napathali, Reuben? What about all of them? Mm -hmm. We're talking about a time when there will be reunification of both northern and southern kingdom. Mm -hmm. Then it talks about Sheba and Dedan. When I looked up um, Sheba and Dedan, there's some controversy about it. I wasn't able really to get anything concrete, but some are arguing that these are actually um, Arabs. And so um, when these Arab nations now is the merchants of Tarshish, and a lot of people believe that the Tarshish now are um, the Italians. Okay. Okay. Um, with all of this rulers will ask, have you come to seize the spoil? Have you mobilized your assembly to carry off plunder, to take or to make off with silver and gold, to take cattle and possession, to seize plenty of spoil. They're talking about now, are you, do you have this now, this mindset where you're going to come up against Israel? This is what Sheba, Dedan, and the merchants are, and, and of Tarshish is saying. Now, this is what the father steps said. Therefore, Yekezekiel, Ezekiel, son of man, or son of Adam, prophesy and say unto God, thus saith Yahuwah Elohim. Now, when you see it written like this, Yahuwah Elohim, the question is, is Yahuwah the Father, is Yahuwah the Father of Elohim? Or is Yahuwah Elohim the Mashiach, who we know to be Yahusha, or is he an Elohim? Because an Elohim is a messenger. My argument is that Yahuwah, him, he sends the message. Mm -hmm. He's not the actual messenger. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yahuwah Elohim is king of the host. Mm -hmm. That's who he is, which is a totally different status now than Yahuwah. So you have Yahuwah the father and you have Yahuwah the son, and we're going to even talk about that. Okay? Therefore, son of man, prophesy say against God. Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim. In that day when my people of Israel dwelleth safely, shall you know of it, or shall thou now know it? It shall come from that place of the north part, or the remotest part of the north, and we said now, from America now, the uttermost part is Russia, and many people with you who are all riding horses, a huge assembly, a powerful army, and thou shalt come up against my people Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days, and I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know when I shall be sanctified in you, O God, in their eyes. Let's show here some prophecy. Verse 17 is very important. Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, are thou or are you he of whom I have spoken in old times by my servants, the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I will bring thee against them. So this prophecy, 
okay, that is talked about where he's going to destroy Gog was talked about by other prophets. And the reason why we say that prophecies are reoccurring, because every time Israel went to war, the father would give commands to utterly destroy the people. Mm -hmm. But what we would do, listen, you know what? That's my friend. Mm -hmm. I love him. And I have to save him alive. Mm -hmm. Without understanding, if you don't kill your enemy, the sons and the daughters will grow up, uh -huh. muster up an army, and kill you. And for some strange reason, we don't get it. It's hard, Warren. And I'm listen. Sure. I definitely understand what you're saying. Uh, we, it's it's going to be hard because, yeah. you know, who we are. But at the end of the day, give me my sword. <laughs> listen. Clean house. Our neighborhood, our city, whatever. Solomon. Yes, sir. One of the, uh, yeah. <laughs> Slow. <laughs> 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 yes, um. One of the wisest men uh, at that time said so there's a time and a season for everything. For everything. Yes. Time yes. and a season. Yes. There's a time to love. Mm -hmm. and there's a time to hate. Mm -hmm. There's a time to make war. Yes. And there's a time for peace. Yes. We're at the last stage of it. We've tried everything. When we tried the nonviolent um, marches, they didn't work. They still shot Martin Luther King. Yeah. So there's no other way of getting around this. Mm -hmm. You have those of us that are Israel, but not of Israel. Right. Meaning now is that you're going to have to be careful of every single body. Yeah. Everybody. Mm -hmm. So with that said, let's see now some of these prophets that spoke out against God in this assembly coming against Israel. If we can get um, our good brother Yaakov, the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms, the second chapter, verses one through four. Let's see how we can put all of this in this Torah perspective. Psalms, the second chapter, verse one. Why do the heathen rage mm -hmm. and the people imagine a vain thing? A vain thing. Because in the last days, Gog, okay, Libya, the Ethiopians, and the Persians now, they would be coming up against Israel. So they're going to imagine now this vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against Yahuwah. I, I said, watch this now. Against Yahuwah. Go ahead. And against his anointed. So... That word and is a conjunction. So if we're talking about Yahuwah, who would then be the anointed? Because the word anointed means Mashiach. So we have against Yahuwah, against the Mashiach. Read on. Saying, let us break their, their bands asunder. Right. So let us break their bands asunder. Mm -hmm. That lets us know that's talking about who? Mashiach. Exactly. So we have... The Father, we have the Anointed One, and let us break their bands. Bands now keep things together. Mm -hmm. And so what the nations are doing, they imagine a vain thing. They want to break the unity. They want to break the body. They want to break the family of Israel. Mm -hmm. Read on. And cast away the cords from us. Mm -hmm. He that said in the heavens shall laugh. You shall have them in der derision. Hallelujah. If we can get Yidia, please, if she could do uh, the book of Isaiah 29, 1 through 8. Isaiah 29, 1 through 8. Isaiah 29, verse 1. Woe to Ariel. And Ariel is just Jerusalem. To Ariel. Mm -hmm. The city where David dwelt. Add ye year to year. Let them kill sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Yet will I distress Ariel. I will distress Jerusalem. And there shall be heaviness and sorrow. And it shall be unto me as Ariel. Mm -hmm. 
and I will camp against thee round about. Right. And against will raise thee. siege mm -hmm. against thee with a mount. Mm -hmm. And I will raise forts against thee. And thou shalt be brought down and shall speak out of the ground. And thy speech shall be low out of the dust. Mm -hmm. And thy voice shall be as one that hath a, sim a familiar spirit out of the ground. And thy speech shall, shall whisper out of the dust. Moreover, the multitude of thy strangers shall be like small dust. Wow. And the multitude of the terrible ones shall be as chaff that passeth away. Yea, it shall be at an instant suddenly. Thou shall be visited of Yahuwah of hosts Hallelujah. with thunder and with earthquake and great noise with storm and tempest and the flame of devouring fire and the multitude of all the nations that fight against Ariel, mm -hmm. even all that fight against her and her munition and that distress her shall be as a dream of a night vision. Wow, so let's look at the vision here. It shall even be as when a hungry man dreameth and behold, he eateth, but he awaketh, and his soul is empty. Or as when a thirsty man dreameth, and behold, he drinketh, but he awaketh, and behold, he is faint, and his soul hath appetite. So shall the multitude of all the nations be that fight against Mount Zion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the thing that comes to mind. With the other nations, when they come against Israel, it is not going to come to pass. It's going to be as a man, when he falls asleep, he's eating this big, luscious meal or drinking this, uh, this big, lavish drink. But when he wakes up, he's still hungry. When he wakes up, he's still thirsty. It is not going to come to pass. The Father will defend the nation of Israel. But first, there needs to be a purging because not everybody can make it. Only Israel that is following Torah, no idols, no fornication, those things would never bring you into the kingdom. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so, more question. So, what you're saying is that after Israel has been in the kingdom, mm -hmm. we've had a chance to, we're back in the kingdom, we've had a chance to build up a uh, wealth, and the whole world is basically bowing down to it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yahusha <laughs> is on the throne, right? Okay, he's dwelling with us. Then what's going to happen is these other nations is going to, I guess, whack, slap, and kick against us, and they're going to come up against us. And when they come up against us, they're coming out to, uh, I mean, to try to take all we have, and then Yahuwah is going to fight against them. Yes, because uh, that last enemy, death, has not been conquered yet. So I thought we were going to have peace for a thousand years. And that's what I'm talking about there. And so now Israel's going to be dwelling safely. And while um, the adversary, okay, has been bound for a thousand years, mm -hmm. Israel's going to be in their own land at that time. We're going to talk about that um, in um, Ezekiel, the 39th chapter. Okay, so um, Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, and Ezekiel, the 39th chapter, it complements one another, but it goes a little bit more into detail. And we're going to show the next time um, that we continue on with the lesson, mm -hmm. we're going to be linking up scriptures, um, of revelation along with um, the book of Ezekiel. So this dwelling in safety is gonna be during that thousand years. Yep. And yeah, that's gonna be plotted. Yeah, yeah, because there's gonna be a reunification. Mm -hmm. The only one that can do the reunification is, is, is the Father. It's gonna be the Mashiach. That's the only one that can do that. And so at that time, Israel is gonna be dwelling safely. We're back in our, in our land. We have the, um, the gold, the sheep. I mean, we're just living a, a life mm -hmm. of, of shalom and peace. But again, that adversary now, that old dragon, Satan, mm -hmm. from the beginning, he's been bound for um, a thousand years. And then after that, he's going to be let loose for a little season. But I don't want to get too far into that because that's going to be the next lesson because Ezekiel goes into a lot with that. <laughs> so this whole thing with the mark and all that, is that before this thousand years? Yeah. That's way before the thousand years. Yeah. Right? We're going to have to go through all of that. All of that. Um, and we're going to talk about Revelation, the 17th chapter. Uh, 
because we see it, it doesn't take like a, a person that's um, highly de- about now. Yes, it's going to take a person to have ears, a person that have eyes, because right now things are about to uh, really heat up. And this is not like no major prophecy that nobody else is saying. But from this point in this seventh month. Because the seventh month is a month of rest. Mm -hmm. But there is no rest. Mm -hmm. Things are going to escalate from this point on until um, the inauguration of the next president. Mm -hmm. Things are going to really, really heat up. People are asking, is um, COVID now the mark of the beast? I was asked that. I said, listen, it shows all the signs of the mark of the beast. But I can never tell anybody that this is definitely now the mark of the beast. I tell everybody now that this is a rehearsal and everybody needs to get their acts together because the Father is giving us a small window, just like Mori Eliyahu was teaching now that, for us to get our acts together. Whatever it is that you need to say, whatever it is that you need to do, there's a small window of opportunity because the adversary is doing a trial run on how the people are, um, are reacting now with what they're doing so far. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that, that was the whole thing, and um, I, I really needed to look at that um, again. It was taught that once we're in the land, that everything is good, mm-hmm. um, there's going to be no more wars, and everything's going to be good. But I will say this. After everything is said and done, when we talk about peace and shalom, there will be peace and shalom because, for example, there was peace and shalom when Solomon was reigning. Mm-hmm. Israel didn't go to war do no times with King Solomon, mm-hmm. but there were still other nations around them. They wanted to go to war, but the father now, um, based upon Solomon's name, it also means peace, and he gave them peace. Mm-hmm. But after that, Solomon died. The kingdom got, you know, it, it was written to with Rehoboam and Jeroboam. But I just say that to say is that there's patterns in Scripture where we're going to see now when we go ahead with um, Ezekiel, the 39th chapter, is that there's going to be a nation that's going to come up against Israel after they have been reunified and they're back in the land. Mm-hmm. Okay, and we just want to show some things here um, in Scripture to prove all of this. So we, we was at, um, you did 29, 1 to 8. Mm-hmm. We're going to have Teharia, please. And she can do 2 and 20. That's, that's going to be okay for you? You sure? Isaiah 2 and 20? Uh-huh. Joel, excuse me. Joel. 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 Yes. 2 and 20. Joel 2 and 20. But I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate Mm -hmm. with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea and his sink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he has done great things. Right. So um, verse 20 where it talks about um, with his face towards the east sea Okay, we're talking about the Dead Sea. Okay, um, and the hinder part, the hinder part toward the utmost sea would be the um, Mediterranean Sea, and there's going to be a whole lot of death, and we're going to talk about that um, next week. Um, I'm going to read Joel. We're almost done here, Mishpachah, the Book of Joel. Joel, the third chapter, and I'm going to read 7 to 21. The third chapter, 7 to 21. Let me read verse 6. The children also of Yehuda and 
with the children of Jerusalem have you sold to who? The Grecians. The Grecians. That you might remove them far from their border. Border just means their homeland. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whether you have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the children of who? Yehuda. And they should sell them to who? Sabians. All right. To a people far off, for Yahuwah have spoken it. Um, I'll read down to 21. Proclaim you this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Watch at this time now. Beat your plowshares into swords, okay, and pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all you heathen, and gather together, or gather yourselves together round about. Cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Yahuwah. Let the heathens be awakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, the valley of decision. For there will I sit to judge all the heathens round about. Put in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full, the fast overflow, for the wickedness is great. Multitudes and multitudes in the valley of Jehoshaphat, or the valley of decision, for the day of Yahuwah is near in the valley of decision. At this time, it says that the sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Yahuwah also shall roar out of Zion, and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake, but Yahuwah will be the hope of his people, and the strength of Yisrael. You shall know that I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, dwelling in Zion, my set-apart mountain. Then shall Jerusalem, then shall Jerusalem, just get this one more, one more. Then shall Jerusalem, what verse we stopped at? 17. 17. You shall know that I am Yahuwah. Your Elohim dwelling in Zion, my set apart mountain, then shall Jerusalem be holy there, and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine, and the hills shall flow with milk, and all the rivers of Yehuda shall flow with waters, and a fountain shall come forth of the house of Yehuda, and shall water the valley of uh, Shittim. Misraim, Misraim, which is Egypt, shall be a desolation, and Aduom, Edom, shall be a desolate wilderness. And the violence, because now, for the violence against the children of um, Yehuda, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. And Yehuda shall dwell, shall dwell forever in Jerusalem from generation to generation. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed. For Yahuwah dwelleth in Zion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Two more scriptures. Mr. McConnell, let's go to Zechariah 12 and 1. If we can have um, our brother James, if he can read that, Yaakov, if you can do that one for me. Zechariah what? Um, Zechariah 12 and 1. And I'll do Zechariah. Mm -hmm. 12, 2 to 3. Zechariah 12 and 1. The burden of the word of Yahuwah. For Yahshua saith, saith Yahuwah, which strength which stretcheth forth the heavens, and layeth the foundation of the earth, and formeth the spirit of man within, within him. Okay, hallelujah. And let's bring it home with this one right here, the book of... Um, Zechariah the 14th chapter, we're just going to read verses 1 to 3, or just 1 to 3. Behold, the day of Yahuwah cometh, and the spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, 
and the houses raffled and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall Yahuwah go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of, um, of battle. So Mishpachar, we're going to, um, let me just read the rest of Zechariah. So that when we pick up next week, we can go ahead and get into the meat of it. Because Zechariah, I mean, because Ezekiel now has a lot to say about what's going to be happening now in these end times. Verse 18. And it shall come to pass in that same uh, time when God shall come against the land of Israel, saith Yahuwah, that my. 18, excuse me. 18. Verse 18, yes. 18, 18. Mm -hmm. 38, 18. Oh, 38, 18. Yes, uh huh. We're back into Zechariah. We're going to finish it up. Huh? You mean Isaiah? No, Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Oh, Ezekiel. No, excuse me, Ezekiel 38, 18. I'm sorry. My fault. Ezekiel, Ezekiel 38, 18. It should come to pass at that same time, important now, same time is the key word, when God shall come against the land of Israel, say if you boy Elohim, that my fury should come up in my face. For I am jealous and in fire, and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea, and the fowls of the heaven, and the beasts of the field, and all creeping things that creepeth upon the earth, and all men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at Yahuwah's presence. Wow. <laughs> mm. And the mountains shall be thrown down, and the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, saith Yahuwah, Elohim. Every man's sword should be against his brother. And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood. And I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon many people that are with him. An overflowing rain, and great hailstone, fire, and brimstone. Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am Yahuwah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, and again, the only reason why I wanted to bring this out is that I just want everybody to be mindful. Um, of what's going on is important for us to understand that he that endureth into the end shall be saved and um, this is going to be a long battle and I just want everybody to be as prepared as possible don't give up don't give up please never 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 give up all right because there is a reward at the end of the uh, the rainbow here and so let's keep moving and when I say I mean we're not talking about the LBG <laughs> that, 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 okay you know, we talk about the promised covenant of the rainbow all right so um, <laughs> We're going to make sure that we keep hold to that. Are there any questions? And um, I know there's a whole lot about that um, that 1,000 year um, millennium reign, but we want to definitely tackle that the following week. Okay, if there's nothing else, I don't see anything here online pertaining to um, today's Topic. I don't see any um, questions here. Okay, what is that? Uh, did you get a notification that somebody asked a question? Did you see anything? Okay. Different meaning. Okay, so with that, Mr. Cobb, I'm going to blow the shofar seven times and we'll have um, the firstborn. Of Zabud and Yidiyah to close us out with prayer.
thank you and praise you for another day. Yes, thank Father. you for letting us be able to, you know, just wake up this morning, have air on lungs, be able to do the things that we need to do today and come back and fellowship with our family in, in your word. Thank you for the message that Maury has brought to us today. Um, I pray that you write upon our hearts and keep us throughout this week so that when we may be able to make it to your set of parts Shabbat. Thank you for the festival. Thank you for the Day of Atonement. Pray that um, you help us not to have anything, any malice or anything in our heart that we're not supposed to. And yes, you know, keep the keep the uh, festival pure and set apart how it's supposed to be. I pray all these things in your son's uh, set apart name. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.